Hi, welcome back to Box of Delights. In this episode, I'm presenting 404 Law Not Found. This is a preview copy, so everything I'm going to show you is purely prototype. It's produced by 3D Total Games, designed by Greg Carslaw, and it's showing on Kickstarter now. And one of the great things is it's out of the UK, which you don't often see in Kickstarter. So what have we got in the components? We have a player board, a rule book, we have a whole set of tokens, and in the prototype we've also got some some counters here, some cardboard counters to represent the robots in the game, but these are going to be uh, models when it comes to the final version, a whole bunch of tokens. And we have a few stacks of cards. So what's this one about? The premise is, and I've set everything up here, that we're on board this spaceship. It doesn't have a name yet. I think in the, the version of the rules I've got it's SS Doppelganger, but they're still looking for a name for the ship. The premise is that for two to six players we're each playing a robot, and everything was good for a while. The robots were helping the humans run this ship, being controlled by a series of laws. Unfortunately, a whole bunch of new microchips came and those laws got replaced with directives. These directives are now the things that your robots are going to follow and they don't necessarily involve the humans coming out better off. So I'm just finishing setting up. We've got different rooms here. We've got engine rooms, we've got storage and disposal where we have three spacesuits. We've got a couple of um, engineers here in the engine rooms. A couple of scientists here in the science labs. This one's science, this one's cloning. These things here are called uh, jelly counters, cloning jelly counters. And then we've got a couple of soldiers here in weaponry and navigation. In weaponry we've got some missiles three of them in the missile racks. And here we have a, a navigation computer. I'll just finish setting up storage. We have an outdated navigation map, a banana, a pie, a banana and a second pie. That outdated navigation might be used to replace the up-to-date and the accurate navigation over here in the nav room. The bananas and pies, well bananas We've got a monkey up here in a cage in science. He's going to be wandering around causing some trouble. And the humans in this game are going to be controlled by some AI. I'm going to set this up as a two-player game, so let's grab the green and yellow players. We're going to grab a room card. So initially they begin face down in a stack, and this is going to determine random locations for the green and yellow player. So the green player is going to start in cloning and the yellow player is going to start in disposal. The rest of the rooms now can be turned faced up and we can sort these and place them alongside the board to remind us what happens in each room. Each player also draws a chip, one of these cards. And the idea of this is that we're going to have kind of a special ability that each one of our robots, which the, with the chip installed, is going to give them. Let's draw from the bottom because they're double sided. Okay, so this orange one here for, or yellow for the, just give us to the yellow player and the green one to the green player. It'll make us remember who is who. Um, and then we'll turn them over. So the green player has this special ability, timing chip, the yellow player, banana chip. And there's quite a lot of variability in here. You see we've got a, a nice big stack of cards. Remember these are prototype cards as well. They're slightly undersized. And then we draw a deck of 10 event cards. One, two, three, four, five, ten. These four will be inactive events and we'll place them to one side. These 10 events are our active events. Once we get through those 10 events, then the game will be over. So it's kind of counting us down through the game. And then what we do is get our directives. 
for our robots. So we're only playing two player here, so there's not much to do, but we deal four directives to each player first. One, two, three, four. And now we have a draft mechanism to take three directives. So each player chooses one of their four directives to keep, and then they pass the other three on to the left, and they receive three from their right. Okay, so the numbers in the top left here, they kind of give you a, a guide. So the level one directives are easier to complete than the level fours. So let's grab the level one, pass the other three to the yellow player. The yellow player does the same. We'll take this one, pass the other three to the green player. And then we repeat until each player has three directives. You're kind of be left with the more difficult missions getting discarded. We'll place these on the bottom of the directives deck. Let's have a closer look at one of these green objectives. Let's see, organised science is one of their directives. Improve science, hide cloning. Um, Organised science says there are no objects or robots in the science room. So this is your objective. You complete this, you get this directive. Here's the science room. All these tokens are items uh, that you can have humans or creatures like the monkey. These things like this are objects. And the first player to complete all their directives is the winner. And we've got to use this spaceship, the objects, the humans, our robot pieces, performing actions around the spaceship. And also space, space kind of counts as a ninth room if you like, to complete those directives before our opponents. Let's walk you through some gameplay so you can see how this, this plays out. First thing we do is we draw an event from the event deck. The events can either be a planet, um, and that means that the humans on board ship will attempt a mission. It could be a enemy ship, and that means that an enemy ship is ready to attack. Or it could be a meteor, and a meteor is heading towards and will strike the ship unless we react to it. So these events are things that we need to, on our turn, as well as try and finish our directives, react to right, and distract us from our directives. So let's reveal the top one. It is a meteor. Now I know that a meteor heading in like so is going to strike this side of the ship and to avoid the meteor strike we need to fire up the engine on the right side of the ship. Okay, the meteors coming in from the right. There'll be other meteors coming in this way. We would need to fire up this engine. If we don't, then we're going to take a hit and the robots are going to drop everything they're carrying. And that's important because moving stuff around is the right way to complete directives. Once we've drawn an event, now we have the AI kick in and the humans on board, who are inherently stupid, are going to follow some basic logic to move around the ship and take actions. The rule book gives us a nice flow chart and we just follow it down for each of the humans on board and then we've got a separate smaller chart for the monkey. We should do the soldiers first, then the scientists and then the engineers here. We've got two soldiers and they're in weaponry and navigation rooms. The placement of these tiles is important. Whenever you have these, these items or people's then they need to go in one of these two or three spaces. So here, for example, the soldier is on the floor of the weaponry room. Your robots, they never go in one of these, what they call zones. They only ever stand in the middle. Whereas these items, they are never in the middle here. They're always in a zone unless they're being carried by a robot. All right, so these spaces are important. For example, the missiles are in the missile racks. They can move from zone to zone, 
but they always have to be in a zone. So let's follow through the logic for a human. It says if I'm in a location other than a floor or space zone, and then you follow the red arrow for no and the green arrow for yes. Now we're in the space, the floor zone. Next, will turning on the machine in this room damage an enemy ship? Dodge a meteor, revive a fallen crewman, or lock the monkey in its cage? Well, the machine in this room is the launch tube, and that's not going to do anything, so that's a no. The launch tube only does stuff if it's got items in there. Next, is the machine in this room damaged? No. Will the items loaded in this machine in this room have any effect if it is turned on? No. Is an item listed on the machine's room card in this room? The only items in here right now, apart from the soldiers, are soldier kits and missiles. So let's have a look at the room card for, for weaponry. And yeah, we've got a whole bunch of stuff listed on here. This is the weaponry, alien artifact, and these are the uh, scientist, technician and soldier icons, their kit icons. And this orange bordered globe is kind of a universal thing that represents all objects. So that would be a yes. Is an item listed on the machine's room card in this room? Yes. So the human then takes this action. Load that item into the machine. So our human soldier here will load a missile into the launch tube. One thing to remember when our soldier here or any other human takes an action is it needs a kit. This soldier has a kit. If it didn't have a kit, then his success in taking the action, in this case loading a missile into the launch tube, is dependent on drawing an action card. And if we get to that, I'll show you. The other thing is that you'll notice that there were two um, items in weaponry that matched. There was the missile, but also the soldier kit, and both of them were in this room. But there's a priority order when checking around. First they check the non-machine, non-floor zone, which in this case is the missile rack. If there's nothing there that they can use, then they'll check the floor zone, this zone here. And if there's nothing there they can use, only then will they check the machine zone. In addition, if it finds more than one item in the zone that you can use, like there was a stack of missiles here, it always takes the one topmost in the stack. And these stacks are important, you can't change the order. And you can see that a human here below items, they're effectively carrying those items. If this missile was down here, and this soldier moved off, he would leave the missile behind but take the kit with him. Alright, so that's why the stacks are used. Now we check the next human, the next soldier, which he used down here in navigation. Um, there's nothing in this room he's going to use, so he would have got as far as... Will the items loaded into the machine in this room have any effect if it is turned on? But humans never activate the navigation computer. They don't understand it. They're terrified of touching the thing. Are any of the doors in this room open? No. Does the room in this does this room contain a banana or pie? No. Do nothing. Alright, so this second soldier, the one in the navigation room, is going to do nothing for now. Now we move on to the scientists. There's two, both in the floor zones of their respective rooms. Incidentally, the cage here counts as a machine with the monkey in, so that means that the human here, the scientist, isn't going to get far down this chart. What's interesting is that after you've done this a few times, it does become very, very easy to remember, and you will take the actions very quickly without referring to the flowchart. So yes, activate the machine. This will lock the monkey in his cage, and what that means is no items or creatures may enter or leave the cage until the next turn. Now we look at this scientist, what's he going to do? He's going to, if we look at the, the cloning tank room, it has missile, cloning jelly and fuel. He's going to load some cloning jelly into the clone pod or clone tank. Now the engineers, oh, we forgot to put some fuel in these fuel tanks. They would fire up these engines if there was anything in there, but there aren't, so this engineer is going to put a fuel tank in the engine. And this engineer, who's got an engineer's kit, a fuel tank in this engine. Now all the humans have taken their actions, it's time for the monkey. He doesn't need any kit because he's a little bit smarter than the humans. 
his actions always succeed, but unfortunately for the monkey, this scientist here locked him in his cage, he can't move this turn. So now all the humans and the monkeys have done their bit, it's time for us as robots to do our bit. First thing we do is grab the actions deck and give it a shuffle. We're going to be able to perform one to three actions on our turn. And these cards are going to be used to derive which actions we can and cannot perform. We draw five for the green player. We've got to choose three of these. And kind of space alert style, each one of these cards has two actions and depending on which way up we place it determines which action we're taking. Alright, so we're going to place three actions and we're going to put them in a sequence from left to right. And in choosing our actions, we obviously got to be mindful of what our directives were because these are the things we're trying to fulfill. There's no objects or robots in the science room. So if the green player thinks about how he might achieve that objective, without giving too much away at this stage, I'm going to choose three actions. And the first one's going to be move. This one is reorganize. Then uh, pick up, put down, and then move once more. Okay, so once you're ready with your actions, you turn them face down, keep them secret from your opponent. As for the yellow player, so look at his directives. I think we'll try and go for the, the hide ships directory. The outdated navigation disk is the only thing in a navigation computer. Remember the outdated nav disk is over here in the store. So let's have a draw five cards and choose three. One, two, three, four, five. And I think we just want to move three times if we can. I mean we could move, move activate the engine and that will allow us to miss the meteor strike. I'm not sure we want to miss the meteor strike. I'm quite happy if we get the meteor strike because that might play with, with Green's plans a little bit. So let's go move, move, move I think. Move, move, move. Okay, move, move, move. And then the other cards that we don't use together with Greens unused, they get discarded. And now we reveal our actions and we resolve them. And we resolve them in priority order. So let's take our first action. So green's going to move, yellow's going to move, and the lowest number gets to go first, kind of like priority one comes first, right? And then priority two, three, four. So the lowest number goes first. So yellow's getting to move first. So we open the door walk through. Now we can decide to leave the door open or close it behind us. And we're going to leave the door open, I think. Now green is going to move and they're going to open this door, move through into the science lab and close the door behind them. Now we move to the next action. It's going to be pick up for green and move for yellow. Green has the priority, 8 versus 26, so they'll go first. Green has the pick up, put down action. When you pick up, put down, you nominate a zone. If you want to pick up, which we're going to do now, we can pick up the top one or top two objects from that zone. So we're going to pick up the science kit and the scientist. Yes, you can pick up humans and the monkey. And to reflect the fact that we picked these up, we're going to take them and put them in our player area. Okay. And yellow's going to move. It's going to open this door, move down here, leave the door open. Now our final actions for green was a move, priority 6, and for yellow, a move, priority 21. So green's going to now move into the 
cloning room. And we'll shut the door behind us. And yellow is going to move through to the storage room and leave the door open. And now that we've completed the robot turn, it's time to resolve our event, which is our meteor strike. So this means that the green robot is going to drop the scientist and his kit onto the floor space in the cloning room as the ship shudders, losing its grip. There you go. No one else is carrying anything, so that's that. Let's clean up all our discards. And this one. And we're ready for the next turn. A little bit quicker this time, so we got an event. This time it's a planet. And it's the scientists here. If we can pick up a scientist, what that means is that we will go down on this planetary expedition with the scientist. And this will help us refresh our chip abilities. So for example, if the green player picked up a scientist now, it says if when he uses his timing ship, it says flip after action cards are revealed to make your action card have a priority value of your choice. So if we use this as timing ship and flips it, the only way to get it flipped back over again so it's usable is to go on a planetary mission. Reflip upon completing a planetary mission. All right, so that's how you refresh your chip abilities by picking up one of these people's when this event resolves. This soldier here is not going to do anything. He doesn't know how to use the nav computer. This soldier, though, he would normally activate that machine if the event was an enemy ship. It's not. It's a planet. And that missile would do damage to an enemy ship. What we're going to do is uh, instead of check here, are any of the room, doors in this room open? No. Does the room contain a banana or a pie? No. If it did, he would munch on that banana or pie. Num, num, num. So he's going to do nothing. The soldier here has done his job. He's loaded a missile until that thing's fired or someone brings him some, some snacks. He's going to stand there loitering. Now let's consider the scientists. There's two of them here, each holding science kits in the cloning room. They're just going to move the cloning jelly from the jelly vat into the cloning pod. Both our engines have fuel in them. So that means we're going to be looking at this second part. Will the items loaded into the machine have any effect if turned on? Yes. Are any of the doors in this room open? Yes. Close all doors to this room. Okay, so our engineer is going to go and close the doors. I'm doing that hard work that the yellow player put in. And this engineer is going to do the same. So we're not wasting fuel. We're not loading any more fuel in that we don't need, but we are closing some doors. Now it's the old monkey's turn, and there was no one around to lock this monkey in its cage, so what's he going to do? Am I in a room with a banana? No. Is there a banana on the ship? Yes. Steal an item, move one room towards the banana, and leave the door open. The banana, incidentally, is down in the storeroom, underneath this pie. And the shortest route is this way. Uh, there aren't any items in here anymore, so the monkey's going to escape from his cage, move down here, leaving the door open, and we'll place him here with the scientists. Now hang on, we have the green player shouts, fulfilled a directive. We have organised science. As soon as the conditions for a directive are complete, we can announce our directive is complete. There are no objects or robots in the science room. Great job, one of our directives is complete. We place it face up in our player area. We get three, we win the game. Well, that's a quick demo of 404 Lawn Not Found. There's loads of other stuff to go on. You know, you can use your engines to dodge meteors and destroy items that are loaded into the engines. If the doors into space are left open and any of our humans or, or the monkey isn't wearing a spacesuit, then they're going to die. So your directives may involve, you know, killing the monkey or the people, or having certain areas of the ship exposed to space. The alien artifact here, if we place it in in different different machines, different things are going to happen. So, for example, if we place it in the nano lathe here, and if this machine is activated 
it destroys all other items that are in the nano. You're going to find different ways to, especially if you pick up the uh, the banana. And incidentally, the yellow player had a good one, banana chip. Uh, grab a banana from the supply. You know, you can entice the monkey to move around, stealing items and leaving doors open. We already talked about missiles doing damage to ships, so we've got these enemy ship events. If this activates, then the nano and the navigation here, there's different ones on different cards, will get damaged. So we place these damage tokens on those machines. But also, if you fire missiles from the nanotube, they are going to be doing damage to these ships. And hopefully, I mean, this one's got got an armor value of two. So if you do two damage, this this ship is destroyed. So you're going to be wanting to look out for these events and fire missiles for sure. Hopefully, you're your soldier's going to stay here doing that, unless the monkey's been messing about or any of your opponents have been messing about. You know, you might have a directive that involves having that part of the ship damaged. And then finally, the um, the nav computer here. So you saw one of the yellow player's directives was to, to pick up the outdated navigation map and replace the one that's in there with this one. But if you've got the accurate navigation in there and you activate this then you can rearrange the cards in the event deck so there's all sorts of stuff going on wearing these suits giving these suits to the humans and the monkey to help them survive in space with open doors and so on and finally there's there's lots of um, player interaction so if for example this this robot moved in here if you're in the same room as another then you kind of shove you shove that robot out of the way. So you can really scupper with their with their plans by shoving each other around the ship. I think this is going to do really well on Kickstarter. I love the theme. I love the humour behind it. I love the, the artwork. It's fantastic. If you look at 3D Total Games, you'll see that you know they, they've got a lot of good artists behind them. And this may be the... They've done a card game once in, in the past. I think this is their second venture. But this is their first board game. It may be the first of many. So I wish it lots of success. Going back, if you like the idea of the game, it can be a lot of fun. The rules are quite simple, and I think it's, it will be great for, for a group, particularly in a game group where you can have a lot of laughs. Go check it out. 404, Lawn Art Found.